G'day everyone, Blake here with another video and it was about six or eight weeks ago now I believe that I reviewed the uh, Mr. Aqua bookshelf tank and set up this beautiful scape with the materials supplied by Nanotanks Australia. Well, it's all grown in now using the dry start method and I'm pleased to say that we're ready now to fill this up with water, get some inhabitants and have a real life usable aquarium. So let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so as I mentioned, when setting this scape up as the dry start method, I've just got some cling film or glad wrap on the top, retaining that humidity. I've sprayed it down about every week or two, nothing too crazy, and I've just let the plants grow in naturally. So I'm happy with the growth now. I believe the roots should be well established. There might be some melt back because all these plants here are in the immersed form, but I think we should start to get this tank full of water, get the filter on and running, and get this tank ready for livestock because uh, by the end of this video, we're actually gonna have fish in here. Before anyone panics, I'm not being irresponsible. This is a number of weeks before you'll see this video, so I've given it plenty of time to cycle. So since the past video, I did receive quite a few products that I will uh, give my opinion on now, especially this uh, Aqua EL Letty Slim Light. Now this is a 60 centimeter light with full RGB. It's got clips on the side keeping it nice and firmly in place. And I think that it makes a really nice sleek addition to a bookshelf tank like this, which can be difficult to light sometimes. You don't want something that's really gonna be overbearing and take away all the impact from the sort of endless seeming uh, length of the bookshelf tank because it's got that shallow uh, depth and also it's not very tall. You can easily, easily overbear the dimensions of a tank like this but I think this Lady Slim Light does it perfect justice being a light color. It sort of blends a little bit into the wall color here. As well as that, obviously I'm happy with the light that it's provided because it's allowed these plants to grow in nicely. I haven't noticed any drop in red coloration on the AR Mini either, which is always a pleasing thing that I look for in aquarium lights. Of course, we have to put it to the test when the tank is underwater so that we can get an idea if it's gonna grow a lot of algae and stuff like that. But uh, early signs point to this being a really, really positive uh, light and, and I'm really impressed by it. The next thing, of course, we need to set up the filtration and for that, I have also been provided by Nanotanks Australia, the Aqua EL Mini Pat filter. It's kind of a hybrid, I think, but between a sponge filter and you know your, your normal internal filter because it has this really nice intake sponge, which is gonna stop any shrimp or any small fish being sucked into it. This filter here is going to circulate up to 400 litres per hour, which is going to be perfect for a little tank like this. And it's just going to hang neatly at the back on the side, uh, out of the way. Now you might have remembered when I set up this aquarium, this rock, the largest rock in the scape, is forward just a little bit. And that's to accommodate the filter that is going to go into this aquarium. It does come with suction cups here or a hang up. I'll show you how to set them both up, but I think we'll probably use the suction cups just because they'll be a lower profile. It has a couple of options for uh, the water outlet, including this Venturi system here, which is gonna get some nice air movement into your aquarium. Or there's an, also a sort of a spade outlet here, which is gonna be a bit more of a gentler flow. In terms of the actual filter itself, you can see it's a nice little compact little unit. So it's just got some fairly nice coarse sponge here at the bottom, which goes through an inlet there, slides on there neatly. And then we've just got our little pump head here and some adjustable flow option as well. Simply runs, we've got some nice length of cord here, probably two or three meters. And then because I'm in Australia, we have obviously the AU plug. Very efficient little pump as well at only four watts. So it's not gonna be too much of a drainer on the power bill. I do think that this is a great little filter, especially for shrimp tanks, because all of that surface area on this sponge here is gonna grow some nice little food and a biofilm that shrimps will really love. And it's not gonna suck up any shrimp babies. So you should be safe with even the smallest of fry. Now when setting up the filter with either the hanger or the suction cups, I find it easier just to take off the sponge and the piece at the bottom. So if you do wanna use the hanger, the, f the thing that's important to know is it's really, really hard to adjust the height after it's installed. So you just sort of put it beside the pump head and then select a height that's suitable for you. And then there's just a channel here on the back of the pump. So we just angle it down and just sort of press it in place, just like so. And then our 
Hanger is firmly in place here and ready to go on the outside of our aquarium. I think I'll just stick with the suction cups itself. So I'm just gonna take this off, take the hanger out, and just use it as suction cups alone. Now I'll just place the inlet back on the bottom and the filter sponge over it. And the last thing is to select an outlet. I think because we're not having any air stones or anything, I'll probably use the Venturi system, which just slides on the end there. It's the exact same process for the spade uh, outlet if you wish to use that. So there we go, really simple little pump to set up. I'm now just gonna put it at the little area that we created at the back of this rock here, and we'll fill this tank up with water and start it cycling. In addition to that, I will place the heater behind there, which is the Aqua EL Ultra Heater that I did do a separate video reviewing on. I'll put it in a card above now. And just like that, it's been over a month since that last clip that you just saw. But that's kind of a good thing because you can see how everything is tracking from that point. So I filled up with water on, on that day back in July and we've had the filter running for the past month. Now, happy to report that things are going really well. It's nice and quiet. You get some nice aeration through that Venturi system. And I have played around with the adjustment as well. So at full blast, it pumps the water quite quickly around the uh, structure we've got here in this aquarium. But I like to have it sort of about the 10% or 15% mark. I feel that gives a good flow for this aquarium whilst we still generate the Venturi aeration. And uh, overall, I'm happy with that. So there's definitely plenty of capacity left in this filter for whatever type of fish or inverts you want to put. And with that topic, we do have some uh, inhabitants in this aquarium. Originally, I wanted to showcase some of their more unique offerings, and we were talking about fish such as the annual killifish, the Nothobranchius. However, with this tank here, it's a bit of a jumping risk, especially for killifish, and I thought about potentially building a bit of a lid, but I wanted to keep that open feel. So we've landed on shrimp as a great option for this tank, and I think that it kind of goes hand in hand, the uh, Mr. Aqua bookshelf tank and shrimp as a stocking option. So we do have one of the more uh, sought after shrimp that is available in the hobby. We've got some blue bolt shrimp here, a Caridina species, which has some beautiful white and blue modeling. I think, uh, yeah, the colors are fantastic and I've got half a dozen of them. So six of those uh, shrimp in here, which I've been absolutely stoked about. I have noticed one downside of the uh, Aqua EL filter in the back that has that sort of sponge design on the outside is that I barely ever get to see the shrimp because they're always grazing on that sponge, but I'm totally okay with that. It's doing a great job and no shrimp have been sucked into that. I've been lucky enough to see them grazing out the front here and I'm trying to feed in the furthest corner away from the sponge just to encourage them to get out and about a bit more, but I'll do a full care guide on this uh, shrimp species down the track once I've been able to work out some of their kinks and uh, just that I'm comfortable enough in the information that I'm providing to you. It's also been good to confirm over the past month that the light on this aquarium is gonna do a fantastic job. You can still see some beautiful vibrant reds on the AR Mini. This S Repens is also growing pretty well. We are starting to get some of that new aquarium thing like the occasional strand of filamentous algae and that sort of thing, but I've got no real concerns about that and we'll manage that as time goes on. So overall, I'm really, really happy with the performance of the light and the filtration. I think they provide great options for a tank such as this. The aqua soil and the plants are all doing really well. And I love that black lava rock, especially because it's gonna have lots of cracks and crevices to grow biofilm to keep these shrimp nice and happy. So huge thanks once again to Nanotanks Australia for providing everything in this aquarium here. I'll provide a bunch of links down in the description below if you wanna check any of it out for yourself. Um, that's it for this aquarium. Hopefully you enjoyed this little series. Hopefully it's provided you with a bit of insight and something a bit new to, to go and explore. If it has helped you, it always helps me out to hit like, subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.